everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Timmy Pray God Gift. To those of you that have subscribed to my channel, I say thank you and welcome back. Now, if you're new to this channel, kindly hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon so you don't miss out whenever I upload a new content. So in today's video, we will be looking at how to install CentOS Linux on our virtual machine. So sit back as we head over to my screen while I take you through this installation process. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to my screen. So in today's lesson, we'll be looking at how to download and install CentOS 7 Linux on our virtual box. So the first thing we want to do is to download. So I need you to open your browser and then on your browser search page, just type CentOS 7 download ISO. And then look out for this link, index of Linux CentOS 7 ISOs x86, and then click on it. Now it brings you to this page. When it brings you to this page, you want to look out for this link, CentOS 7 x86 64 DVD 2009.iso to be able to download the image file of your CentOS 7. So in my own case, I already downloaded it to save time because the file is quite large, about um, four gig or thereabout. So if you want to download, just go ahead and click this link and then it will start downloading to your machine. So I'll just close this page. And then the next thing we want to do to be able to install first, we need to configure some settings on our virtual box. So I'll open the virtual box and then go to this virtual machine that we've created already. And then the first thing I want to do when I get down here is to right click and then go to settings. Now, the first settings I want to configure is our network. So I'll click on network and then go to adapter one. And then under enable network adapter, look at this and change it to bridge adapter. Now in doing this, you are asking the virtual machine to make use of whatever network that is connected to your machine, whatever network device and um, network um, um, apparatus that is connected to your machine. So I'll just click OK. And that is done. And then the next settings I want to look at again is on system. And then I'll look at pointing device. And then I'll change this to USB tablet and click OK. The final settings is on the Generals tab. So on this Generals tab, you go to Advanced. And then where you see Shared Clipboard, you can see that it's disabled. Change it to Bidirectional. And then this Drag and Drop is also disabled. Change it to Bidirectional. And then click OK. OK, so our settings are completed. Now, the next thing I want to do is to attach the image we just downloaded. So to be able to do this, I once again go to the settings and then go to storage this time. And then when you get to this page, click on this first CD icon with the plus sign on it. So I'll click on it and then I'll click on add. And then I want to go to the location where I downloaded the disk image. So it's in my installations folder in my drive F. And then you can see I have quite a whole lot of them downloaded uh, because we'll be installing most of them, you know, much more later. So for this lecture, we'll pick CentOS 7 8664DVD 2009 ISO. This is what we downloaded. So I'm going to open it and then click on choose. You can see that we've successfully attached the disk image. So I'll just go ahead and click OK. And then it's attached. So the next thing we want to do is to click on the start button. So 
So this will now begin the installation process. We'll wait a while. Okay, you can see the, the installation um, process has just commenced. Now on this page, you use your up or arrow, your up or down arrow key um, to check either test media, troubleshoot, you know, or install, install CentOS 7. So what we are going to do in this case is just to go ahead and install CentOS 7 because we are not installing from a disk media, from a CD media, we are installing directly from the ISO image. So we'll just go ahead and hit enter. You can see the installation, pre-installation rather, has started. So we'll wait for it, wait for it to, to start. It's running some checks. As usual, it will run some checks. We just have to be patient and wait for these checks to be completed before the installation starts formally. So we can see we already started. Welcome to CentOS. So the first thing we want to do is to leave the language as English. Okay, and then click on continue. Okay, so on this page, there are a number of configurations we need to do before the installation begins properly. Okay, so the first one to do is your date and time settings. You want to click on date and time to be able to choose your time zone. I am in Nigeria, Africa. So, I'll choose Africa and then in the city, I'll choose Lagos. Okay, and then I click on done. And then the next thing we want to look at is your keyboard layout, but um, we can leave this, you know, by on default at English US. And then the next thing you want to check is your installation media your installation source. So I'll go ahead and click on it. And then this should show local media, okay, auto detected installation media. You can see the image file we downloaded already indicated. So I'll click on done. And then for software installation, let's click on it and see what we are going to choose. Now, if you leave it at minimal install, what will happen is this operating system will install just a command line interface for you. You won't be able to see any graphical user interface, no desktop at all. So we don't want that. We want to install um, this operating system with a desktop. So we're going to choose server with GUI. However, in most corporate environments, they don't install server with GUI, they install just the command line interface. This is because um, the GUI takes up a lot of resources. So most organizations don't allow the installation of GUI servers. So for this practice purpose, we are going to install server with GUI. So we'll click on done. And then the next thing we want to, to look at is the installation destination. So we'll click on that and then ensure that this 20 gig we assigned when we were creating the virtual machine is selected and then we click on done. The next settings we want to look at again is the network and host name. So I'll click on it and then the first thing I want to do is to click on configure. And then I go to general and then I say automatically connect to this network when it is available. This is all you need to do and then click on save. And then you can see that your network adapter is on and then you can see your IP address. It means this machine is already using the IP address that is connected to your network. Now, the next thing we want to change 
is the local host. We'll highlight and then change the host name to my Linux VM and then click on apply. And then once that is done, you click on done. Okay, so the next thing you want to check is your security policy. Now, since we don't have any, but in a corporate environment, it's also good to check with your organization to know what security policies are in place. You know, so since we don't have any security policy, we just leave this at default and then we click on begin installation. Now, the installation has started. However, there are two more things we need to do before the installation starts running completely. We need to set the root password. Now, the root is a super user on Linux operating system. It's like the administrator of every other user. So we'll set this root password. It's always good to set a complex password that you can always remember. So I'll set my password. And then I repeat my password again. Okay, and then I click done. Now, another thing again you need to do is to create another user that you will be using for your practice. This user is not an admin. So I'll go ahead and create another user. The full name. Okay, so you can observe that once I typed my full name here, the operating system automatically created a username with the initial of my first name and then my last name together. Okay, so you can choose to make this user administrator or not. In my own case, I will not make the user ad administrator. Okay, so I'll go ahead and create a password. Okay, and then click on done. So at this point, the installation is running and we can see installing all of this package. So we have to wait for all of this package to, to finish installing before we can proceed. Depending on the speed of your system, this could take anywhere from 10, 15 or even 20, 30 minutes. So in order not to waste our time, I'm going to pause this recording and then we'll resume the recording once the installation is complete. Okay, so the installation is complete and then you can see CentOS is now successfully installed and ready for you to use. Go ahead and reboot to start using it. So we we'll just click on reboot. And then as usual, the system will start rebooting. So once again, I'm going to have to pause this video to save our time and then resume the video once the reboot process is complete. Okay, so our system has rebooted. And then the next thing we have to do is to click on license information and then go ahead and read the license before you click I accept the license agreement. And then click on done. And finish configuration. Again, the system will reboot. Okay, so we are at the login page you can just click on your name to log in or you can log in as root by clicking the not listed and then type in the username as root and then put the password you created during the installation. So I'm going to cancel this because I want to log in with the non-administrative user. So I'm going to click on my name and then put the password 
I created during the installation. And I say sign in. And then it will ask me, oh, he said that didn't work. Oh, that's because I rebooted the system. So um, some of the buttons fail to initialize. Okay, I hope this is correct. Yeah. Yeah, so we're up. And then it's showing me there was one failed login attempt, you can see. So you have to be careful with your password. So here we are. Here we are. In full glare of CentOS 7 Linux. Okay, this is what the interface looks like. Um, you can see this screen is just here like this. And then you would receive this message because this is the first time you are actually um, um, booting this operating system. So the next thing you want to do is leave this at default English. Okay, leave the English at default. And um, you're typing, leave it at default too, and then click on next. Um, privacy, I like to turn off the privacy. Okay, and then click on next. Connect your online account. No, if it's, if it's um, um, your office system, you wouldn't want to do this. You want to keep your, your social media accounts away from your office environment. So I'll click on skip. And then it says you are ready to go. Start using CentOS Linux. So I'll just click on this. And then it's taking me back to, to the screen. And then this is, you know, your getting started page, you know, as usual, this will come up when you just install any Linux operating system for the first time. So I want to go ahead and close this because I don't need this, you know, so I'll close it and then I'm back to the, the desktop. Now, somebody will be wondering why the, the size of the desktop is this way. Don't worry, I'll show you how to fix this up in our next video but for now let's just take a look at what is happening here um, you can see some icons this is like your home folder and then your trash you can uh, right click to resize you know resize if it's too big for you you can do the same to this one right click and then resize you know, and try to move them around you can decide to keep them anywhere you want you know so uh, now, for us to be able to shut down this operating system, um, just come here where you have this um, network icon here connected to your system. Come here and then click on this power button and then say power off. Now, it's asking me for administrator password because um, it's assuming that other people are logged on to the system since it was the first boot. So, I'm going to supply the administrator password. and then I'll say authenticate. Now it's shutting down. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how to take a snapshot and then we'll go through um, a tour. We'll go through a tour of the entire environment of CentOS um, 7. Thank you so much for, for listening. Thank you so much for watching to the end. If you have any comments, if you have any um, question, please type it in the box below and um, I'll do well to respond to your questions and your comments. Bye-bye.